just to jump in here, um, so I just want to change uh, or change my slide here to first welcome everybody. Um, so I'm Stephanie Grice. And then we also have Scott Rutz on here. Hello, hello. hello. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. We got the the duo is back. We're back. So, yes. Our powers so, combined. Yes, which it's is a force. Let me tell you, it's, it's such a powerful Travify force. It's exciting. Um, so yeah, I love love bringing Scott in because um, I know you'll you'll be helping to like answer those questions in the back, but then also uh, color commentating and very great places that you have a lot of knowledge in. So very excited for that. So, so much knowledge. Cool. So much. I will, <laughs> I will give. It's going to be spilling out of you. Uh, the so knowledge good. will be spilling <laughs> yes. all over the desk. It'll be so much. Yeah, no, there's parts of this webinar where I'm like, Scott, just go ahead and take it away. Um, so it's exciting. So it'll be cool. So it's, it's cool to have you on. Um, but one thing that I always like to do before I go any further, I always like to take just like 30 seconds to explain everything that Travify does because there's so much. And of course, you know, we don't have time to cover everything. We're going to be focusing on website and landing page. But if you are um, new to Travify or this is one of your first time checking it out, um, just know that we have a lot of tools built into the Travify subscription. So this is all in your account. Um, starting off with the itinerary builder, you know, that's where we started. We actually started as an itinerary builder years ago. Um, I always like to say it is our bread and butter. Um, it's the most utilized tool in there. So itineraries, you know, um, and of course there's a lot of things built into the itineraries to make it quick and easy and simple to create these really beautifully, um, you know, created itineraries and proposals that help you sell more at the end of the day um, and just help you look professional. You know, there's that mobile app, um, all that good stuff. So lots of cool things there. Um, there's also the proposal builder um, as well, or the proposals, which is very similar to the itinerary. It's the same trip builder. Um, it's just the difference is that the workflow is treated differently, where if you send a proposal to a client, they can actually um, electronically sign their name and um, have like a copy of that proposal. So it's just a really cool way that they can go through that workflow. So you can use it for every step of that sales process. Um, we also have CRM and tasks. So this is really cool. This um, We call it contacts. So you might see it listed as contacts um, a lot of times, but um, it's a very simple CRM, you know, that you can save your client contact information um, in there, save documents, view what trips they've been on, forms they filled out. Um, but then there's also tasks, which we can now put in here. Um, we released that um, last month, um, which was really, really cool. Um, and it allows you now to create tasks um, and set reminders for yourself about anything, you know, whether it's pertaining to a trip, a client, or, um, you know, whatever it might be, um, you can put a task in there. It's really cool and highly recommend. We actually, the webinar we did last uh, month was um, all about that. So I recommend to go check that out so you can get a deep dive into that new feature. Um, and then the other one is forms and credit card authorization. So this works in conjunction with that simple CRM. So you can create a form for anything. And you're actually going to see forms play a role today um, as we're talking about the website builder. Um, but forms allows you to create, you know, form to collect any type of information you need from a client, including that credit card authorization. Um, we are PCI compliant, so you can safely and securely collect credit card information. So really awesome that you can do that all in one place. And then of course, the thing that brought us all here today, the website and landing page builder. And again, one of my favorite things ever because it's just so cool whether you already have a website or you don't, this is great for either one. So if you don't have a website, this is easy and you can pump one out and it will look amazing. Um, but also you can also create those landing pages. So we'll get in more into that and talk about like, what does that mean? How do you do that? All that good stuff. So excited to jump into that website and landing page builder. Um, but just to give you a little overview of what we will be talking about today um, is of course, an intro into this builder um, that I'll talk about. And then I'm actually gonna do a walkthrough and a demo. So I wanna start off, once we get into my account, I'll walk through just where you find things and what things mean basically. So you know um, how to um, navigate your way around the website builder. Um, but then I'm actually going to do a lot of uh, deep dives and so many tips along the way. So we'll get into SEO. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, we're gonna, I'll share um, multiple ideas with you of what actual users have done, and you'll be able to see those. 
Um, and then so much more. There's a lot of pro tips. You're going to hear the word pro that that could be if it were a happy hour, that would be like a drinking game pro tip every time you hear me say that. Um, so there's going to be a lot in here. So get ready. Um, but then hopefully also we do have time for q and I'm not going to lie. We have a lot packed. So um, definitely put those questions in there into the question panel. Um, use that area. And then um, we'll try to get those answered, um, whether it's we're going like Scott can just be going like nuts in the background. Um, but also um, just note that our support team is ready to help you out. So if at the end you think of something or you don't get something answered, um, definitely reach out to our support team. You can chat them in your account um, or you can also that professional at travify.com and we'll try to get that answered for you. So hopefully we have time, but just knowing how much we have, it, it is possible there might not be. So keep that in mind there. Um, but okay. So I'm gonna take a sip of water really quick. Prepare myself. Get ready. Get ready yes. for oh. some website magic. In here. here? Yeah. It's, oh, mine's about to be blown. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the website builder. So I wanted to start off with this slide. Before we dive in, I'm going to have a couple things I want to go over before just to get some questions cleared out of the way before we really dive in here. So first of all, the website builder. It is designed to be super simple and streamlined. That is the whole purpose. So you're going to find, you know, there's a lot of website builders out there that have everything, you know, every bell and whistle. Um, I like to say WordPress as an example, because WordPress is so much. If you get in there, you're like, where do I begin? Um, you know, there's a lot of website builders like that. But when advisors were telling us is they were saying, you know, I just need something simple. I just need something simple that I can literally use myself. I don't have to go out and hire somebody and I can just create a professional looking website. In comes this builder. Um, so that's really why we created this. Um, and it's actually pretty cool. I always like to say that this is also a big product out of the pandemic. Um, we started launching things like this for marketing tools, um, you know, during um, the height of the pandemic when we're like, how can we still be useful and help travel advisors? And it was marketing. And that's where this came, you know, a lot of this came out of. Um, so it's really cool. And then, of course, um, you'll hear us at the end talk about landing pages. Um, and I just want to say, like, what a landing page is, is basically it's a standalone marketing tool. So you can build, um, and I know it gets very confusing, is that you can build a website with this, but you can also build landing pages. So you're able to create pages, um, multiple, like maybe you have one page that's just about services you provide, and you can choose to make that a landing page where you send somebody to that link and they get all that information, or maybe you connect that onto your website. So it's like another page on your website, multi-page website. Um, so just FYI, and with landing pages, think of that too. Like it might be like you're promoting a, cru a cruise package or a group trip, things like that. So that's what that's. Um, I just want to say that at the beginning because I know that can get a little confusing there. But really, I mean, the sky's the limit on things you can do. So that's kind of the the cool thing you can do with this. And then the other thing that I want to talk about is just commonly asked questions. Um, so before we dive deep, um, there's some high level questions that are very helpful to know right before. Um, first one, does it cost extra? And no, it does not. Here's the cool thing. This is part of your subscription. So if you have an account, you can dive in there and access the website builder right now. Um, so there's no extra cost to this. Another one is about, can I use my own domain? And yes, you can. And that's also free. I mean, it's like we're we're setting you up for so much success here. It's it's free. Um, and I will talk about that at the end. I'll explain, you know, what that means, how you can get set up. Um, but otherwise, if you own a domain, it is free to connect that in here and use that. Um, allowing multiple pages. I pretty much answered this talking previously, but um, yes. So um, you can have multiple pages, you know, connected to create one website. Um, and then also when it comes to team members. So if you're on a team um, in your Travify account, um, all your team members are able to go in and use it as well. Um, so they can go ahead and create like their own landing page if they want or things like that. So yeah, they can access that and edit and make their own. And the last one, is it easy to use? Well, I will let you be the judge of it at the end of this. But yes, I would say it is. It's very easy. It's super simple. It's dead simple is what we always used to like to say. So it is awesome. But I don't think there's any other questions. I think, are you ready? Shall we just dive into this? Let's do this. Get All right, on in there. here we go. Crack the old knuckles and get ready. So here we go. Okay, so 
this is what you see when you first log in. So many of you are probably familiar with this, um, but if you're not, this is what it looks like when you first log into your Travify account. And here's where you find your website. So to access the website builder, you will click on your name in the top right-hand corner here and click website. So that's where you're going to find this. That is where it is listed in there. Now, when I jump in here, it's going to take me right in to my, um, you know, builder. Um, but if it's your first time, and I, this is really small on your screen probably, but um, the first time you jump into this, you actually will see this screen. You'll be able to see, you know, all the different um, themes. So we currently have four themes available. We have the Azure theme, Stellar, Kaizen, and Santorini. Um, now you can always view these. You can view the demo for each one if you want to explore it and see. Um, but this is re really what this is, is giving you the ability to find what's going to work with your brand and what, you know, you know, that look you're going for. Um, but here's the good thing is, is if you choose a theme, you can switch it back. So if you're like, oh no, I have to decide, um, you actually don't. So you can always switch them. So you can see I'm in, um, the builder right here and I can switch in my settings to a different theme. So that's the great thing. So you're able to choose your theme later. Um, so when you do get to the screen, don't worry like, oh my gosh, I have to choose this now. You don't have to. Um, but yeah, then you can also view demos from, from this screen as well. So you can see all those. Um, the other thing uh, that's awesome is you can also apply a global theme. So you'll see this button at the bottom. And this is if you have um, like multiple page, like a multi-page website, um, and you just want them all to be the same. Uh, but just keep note that this will also impact any landing page, like one-off landing pages that you build. Um, so if you want to apply a global theme, you could do that. So that way you don't have to edit, you know, everything as you're, or go back and edit things. Um, now, the other thing you can do is you can also change the brand color. So this is where you can really start customizing for your brand. Um, you can choose your theme color. Um, so you can you can scroll around, pick your own color if you want. Um, if you do already know, like if you have like a hex number or something, um, you can go ahead and just input that in there. Um, and that way you can select and set that color, that theme color in there. There's also the favicon. And um, I always love, I th this one always stirs up some questions, is what is that favicon? Uh, so the favicon is basically a tiny little logo that lives on um, the tab. So do you see like, and again, this is really small on your screen, but um, that Travify logo in that tab, or like when you're in your Travify account, you have that Travify, that's our favicon. So that's why whenever you go to one of our websites, you see that favicon. So you're actually able to put your own. Scott, did you have something? I'm going to give a quick pro tip to everyone on Do the it. webinar today. I very, very frequently see agents take their entire logo and just slap it in that favicon field, or they'll just grab some random photo, slap it in there. Please note that favicon, what you see is shrunk down to an area in reality is okay. about 16 pixels by 16 pixels. So do not, I would suggest do not upload your entire logo, pick out the most simplified graphical version of your logo. I call it the mark. So like in Travify, our entire logo, the airplane, the triangle is our mark. That's what I would upload as, um, as the favicon. If you need a software to do that, to be able to kind of crop and adjust and edit, uh, we, we've used Canva, C-A-N-V-A, -A, Canva is a really good one just to simply put together a logo or a PNG, be able to upload it in there. Um, I usually create those at 96 pixels by 96 pixels, even though it displays much smaller. That way, when a lot of today uh, devices are really high resolution, it displays in a really crisp, nice format. So 96 pixels by 96 pixels, um, use a service like Canva to create those, and then you can just drop in that favicon uh, spot there that Stephanie has highlighted. Yeah, Canva is a really good one. Um, it's really easy to use. And and yeah, and we we mentioned right here too, like it's 96 by 96. But um, it's a really good point that you do want to find like it's just a little logo, the mark. That's a good way to put it um, in there.
Um, now another one kind of on the same topic is your logo as well is, um, you can upload your logo, um, in the nav bar here. So I just basically clicked into that. And then on the right hand side, you'll be able to make your edits. So you'll see that by the way, you'll notice that the left hand side is going to show you how it's looking on the website. And then the right hand side is always like your edit toolbox where you can start editing things. Um, but this logo right here, you can go ahead and drop in your logo. Um, now, one thing, another pro tip here is we recommend horizontal images. Um, so like you see this logo, like how that's horizontal, um, recommend that. And then also pay attention that if there's any extra space or padding around the logo, try to remove that out. So um, you just want to like maybe just crop it. If you do have a lot of white space around a logo, just crop it. And then that way it's going to be larger um, in this area right here as well. Um, so just a couple tips on that too. Um, and then uh, the other one. Oh, and actually I was going to share, um, I can share this too. We do have an FAQ on optimal sizing um, because I know that they get a lot of questions on like, what size should that be? Um, there's an FAQ that we have on that um, right here. And I'm just going to drop that in. Um, and this will be really helpful, but just know that that's available there to you as we go. And you're like, what sizes are these photos? That will help you, um, your guide to tell you like what you should make those. Um, another thing too, that you can always add are those social media links. Um, so that's really a big, you know, you see on all websites, um, you can add social media links, like really anywhere, you know, you can just add a new, um, a new button that, uh, sends it, but what it looks like in the bottom footer, your footers are always going to automatically have these, uh, there, but see how, um, we have those links. So we have like the icons for social media, and then you can go ahead and just link those in. But really nice having, you know, just like those little icons, social media icons that you can um, have in there and you can plug in. And then also the biggest thing about this is how this actually, how you put this together. And basically how you put it together is with elements. Now the elements are drag and drop. So you hear us say that a lot. It's a drag and drop, um, you know, builder. And what that means is every piece of this. So see how I click, like I'm clicking on this, I'm clicking on this and on the right-hand side, I can edit. Um, these are elements. So what you can do is you can customize. Um, you could remove out any of these elements if you want. Um, so if you don't want like this one, you can remove that out but you can find all the elements and add them um, by clicking the new element button in the top right-hand corner here. And then here you'll see all the elements listed. Now, every theme will have all these elements. So every theme has all the elements, but they will look a little different. So they'll fit to look like how that theme. So notice how like these alternate bars are just certain colors and certain looks. Um, each theme will have like its own look. Um, but it's really great. So that way it depends, you know, what do you want to add? And then you can find the right element for that and then just drag and drop it in when you want to use it. Um, so that's all you have to do. Um, so again, you know, thinking about the different types of things you might be adding, like if you want to display like, um, your team, like list out, here's about us. Um, maybe in that case, you'll choose like the medium card gallery. Um, and you can list out each team member, or if you want like client reviews, maybe you'll choose, um, you know, the text block. Um, so it's really up to you, you know, what are you, what are you needing? Do you need to put a photo and text? Then we have some options for that. There's image carousels, um, a banner, all kinds of things. Um, and I will dive more into a couple um, elements um, right after this as well. But um, as you can see, though, you know, it's really just plug and play. Um, and another pro tip that I'll give as well is you can see that all of this is drag and drop. So you can drag and drop things into their place. Um, but I understand it gets a little tough when your screen is really large. So a little pro tip you can do is if you click on edit page, this brings you into your like just main settings and you can rearrange these. So if you wanted to switch things around, you could, you could switch them around right here. So um, knowing that you can do that. So really nice, you know, makes it a little easier. So if you just want to plug everything you need and then you go in and rearrange it, you can do that too. Um, now, the other thing that's really great is adding, you know, the, adding those photos and you can also add videos, um, which is incredible. Um, it's really cool. If you want to make this really pop and come alive, um, you can add, um, photos. You can see there's lots of ways to add photos in here. Um, let me just click into this one. For example, um, you can see here's the photo, that image, 
And if you're familiar with Travify already, this will look very similar. Um, but if you're not, um, there are many ways you can add a photo. Um, you know, you can add, we do have a database of thousands of free stock photos. And I personally like using these for websites because this, these stock photos are all going to be very large and high quality. Um, and they're also really great. Like if you're just trying to put a picture of like Rome, Italy or beach. Um, this is a great place just to kind of pop in a really nice photo. Um, or of course, you know, upload your own as well. Um, you can pull from the website, um, if you want. Um, but then you can also add that video. So you could add a video. Um, like if you have, you know, a YouTube or a Vimeo link, that's all you need. You just copy and paste it right in there. Um, and then you'll be able to uh, save it. And a so, couple, couple pro tips on photos within here, because uh, a question or two came in on how do I resize photos? And I want to uh, kind of give you a quick guideline on photos that will help you clear up confusion and understand why you're using Travify's website builder. So you won't need to adjust the size of a photo. And there's a reason for that because people are looking at your website on about a thousand different devices. Mm -hmm. And so Travify's website builder, part of the beauty of it is that it is mobile responsive. So it looks at the screen size and automatically resizes the content to fit that screen size. So you will never have to adjust photo sizes. Now you can adjust the focal point of it. Maybe there's a certain part of the photo that you want to kind of appear in the middle of it. You can adjust the focal point as you can see what Stephanie's doing here. Um, now, having said that, uh, every now and then an agent kind of uh, will upload a photo and have sort of unexpected frustration with the photo editor because they'll upload a photo that's really cropped tightly on something. And because of the mobile responsive nature of it, where Travify is trying to fill the area and make the, the entire grid, the entire layout look really nice, then it, it zooms the photo in even further. And so my tip, my pro tip would be to use a photo that has some breathing room in it, that it's not cropped in already super tightly around the, the focal point of the image, but give it a little bit of breathing room where you can allow it to resize nicely. Uh, like you can see here, instead of the photo being cropped in really tight on just one of those buildings, it, it's backed out a little bit, has a little breathing room so that as the window resizes for a smartphone, a tablet or a computer, it still looks beautiful in there. So just to kind of uh, shift how you think about these photos of, I want to show a photo of this one tiny thing. I want to show a nice photo that has has some different margin added into it. Then it will resize and play nicer with the layout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really important. Um, and one thing actually um, that's really cool because Scott was mentioning, you know, it's going to be viewed on many different screens. So you can actually see what it's going to look like on mobile. And I'll show you how here. So um, when you come up here, you always can click preview um, at the top. So you're always able to click preview and you can just see what it's looking like. Like here it is on desktop. So pretty big wide screen, um, but you can also click and view mobile. Um, so this is really important to check this. Make Make sure you look at this because, um, you know, we live in a world now where most people are going to be on their phones, probably just checking things out. So always assume that they might be on their phone looking at this. So it's really important just to go ahead and just make sure that everything is structured. You know, it makes sense. It's looking good on a um, mobile device as well. So it's cool that you can do that, you know, that you're able to just quickly take a look and do that just right by clicking preview. Um, and then another thing that's really important is right next to that is the publish button. Um, so this one's not published yet, but once I click publish, um, I'll have a URL link that I can then, you know, send it and people can go to. Um, but one thing that's really important is after you publish it, um, if there's anything that you need to edit or change, um, you can make those changes and then you'll just need to publish it again. Um, so just good to know, cause it's a little different with our itinerary builder. The moment you save something and, um, you know, update, it'll reflect on the itinerary. But in here, you actually do have to press publish again, which is kind of nice knowing that you can get in there and edit. And if you have to step away, you know, someone's not going to come to your website and be like, what is this? Um, so that's a nice thing. So always pay attention to that publish button there. So that's okay. So that's like the highlight. That's that is our overview of like where you can find things, where you click around, how you use this. Um, but now I want to highlight a couple elements. I want to highlight a few things in here um, to dig a little deeper. So there's two elements in particular that I want to highlight. Um, because since we're making this on Travify, you have an advantage um, that there's a couple things, you know, you're building itineraries, you're building forms on there. 
So you can actually just import those directly into this website as you build it. Um, so let me show you with trips. So if you create an itinerary, um, whether this is like a promotion, a marketing, or maybe just like a, maybe it's a freebie and you're like, here's your free, um, you know, a three day guide to Chicago, whatever it might be. Um, and you can build that like you would any itinerary. And then when you're in here, you will want to use, um, you can, well, you can use like a button too, but that we actually have this trip gallery. It's specific for this. That's the whole reason for this is the trip gallery that you can then drag and drop in here. Now you can see I have um, these three boxes. Um, we call them cards. So that's what they're they're in there, these trip cards. Um, now I'm gonna remove out two of these cause I'm just gonna add one, um, but you can also add as many as you want. So you can have like 20. If you wanna have like all the trips, all these different trips in there, you can definitely do that. There's no um, limit on that. Um, but you can do things like add a title. So let's just say like um, now booking. Um, you can give like a description if you want. Um, but then when you're actually ready to import that trip in here, you're just going to click on that pencil icon. And then in here, you can see you can start editing things. But instead of going from the beginning and adding, you know, all the information, you could actually just import it from Travify and we'll fill in some of that information for you. Um, so how I would do that is I would literally just click import from Travify. And then I'm going to choose trip. And then what's going to display are my trips that I have in my account right now. And so I can say, okay, I want this Venice, Italy vacation. And there it is. And then you can see there's a couple things in here um, that I'll point out. This, see how this is like the CAD 3400. So that's just pulling because I had that listed in the description for this trip. Um, but it's just using this badge area. So you don't have to have that if you don't want. Um, but it's also cool if you want to use this badge area to just call out something like booking until this time. Or if you want to put like the date in it or something, um, like if it's a cruise or something, um, you can do that. But then you can also edit, you know, the heading, give it a description, um, change the image if you want. Um, all that good stuff. You can even change the way, instead of saying view trip, you could say like, um, you know, something else if you want. So it's all customizable, which is great. Um, but then that's really all you do. And then we're just gonna save this and then let's preview it. And then let me show you what this looks like here. So when, let me scroll down. Here we have that trip. Okay, here it is. Now I'm gonna click view trip. And notice now, again, if you're familiar with Travify, you've seen this look before. This is what our itineraries look like. Um, so you'll be able to view this. Um, your client can view it. Um, but do you notice something different about this one? At the top, there's a button that says contact. So instead of a normal trip that's like sends them like, um, you know, download the, the PDF of this or download the app. Instead, this is pointing them to contact you. So it becomes a marketing tool. So that way they can contact you and then you might get a new lead. You'll get an email notification um, once they, if they do that, um, and then you'll be able to start working with them. Um, so that's what makes this a little different when you're working, when you're importing that trip into the website builder, which is just so cool. Um, so really easy, so easy to do. Um, now, another uh, thing that I want to highlight is also that you can import forms. So in Travify, you know, we were talking about there's a form builder. Um, so you can actually import um, or you can create a form. So a good example of this is like a new lead inquiry or if you're building like a landing page for a trip and you need to just collect some information if someone's interested. So what you can do is you can add a form pretty much anywhere. You would just add a button. So like you can always add a button. Usually like up here, I could do it. But in this example, I'm going to use this call to action right down here. So down at the bottom, this is like the last thing they see. And you're like, okay, this is where the last thing you see. If you're interested, let me know. Um, so what you can do is you could add a button. So I'll just add it down here. And then from here, you can choose. So whenever you're adding a button, you can choose that it syncs to different places. Like if you want it to go to a different page you created, um, if you need to go to an external link, just an email, um, you know, you can choose those options. But in this case, I'm going to choose form. So I can do form. Now, one thing that's really cool is you could just start creating a form right here. So you don't have to like go out and start all over. You could just start you know, creating a form right in here. Um, or you can also just import one that you've already created. Um, so you can see here that I have um, these right here. So let's just say I'll do like lead generation form. And so I'm just going to click that. And then I can change the text. So I'm going to say like 
start planning today. So we'll just say that. And then I'm just going to save it. And then let's see what this looks like here. So I'm going to preview it. This is where your mind might get blown because watch this. So I'm going to click this button. So pretend I'm a, I'm a person just interested. And now I have this form that comes up in the same screen, you know, that they can just fill out. And again, this one's easy. This is literally just a lead. I, I'm just asking for their email and name. Um, and then that's it. And then same thing works if, you know, you had a client fill out another form that you shared with them is you'll get an email letting you know they filled it out. Then you can go in and look at it and um, you can assign it to a contact, create a new contact, um, whatever you need to do. But it's just so cool that you can do all of that, you know, bring all of that in here. So two elements that are really big that I wanted to highlight in there. But now, okay, the next one. So I got to buckle up for this one. So now I want to talk about SEO, which is search engine optimization. So this one is kind of, it throws people for a loop sometimes because they're like, oh my gosh, I have to do SEO, but it's actually not too bad, promise. But you just have to know, just have some guidance on what you're trying to do. So the cool thing is when our developers built this website tool, they had SEO in mind, because at the end of the day, this is a marketing tool and you want to get found. So with SEO, that's basically what that is, is if someone's searching, they're Googling for, um, you know, an agent that can book their travel for um, a resort or something, they will find you. That's what you want at the end of the day is that they are finding you when they're searching for something. And that's where this is going to help you. Um, so there's many different ways to consider of, you know, of using SEO in here. Now, the first one I'm going to start off with is I'm going to go back in to my main settings here. And this is page title. Okay. So when it comes to page title, so this is what I'm bringing in Scott. So Scott, what is the importance? Like how, why is page title so important? It seems so small. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> I've built a few landing pages in my day. I got 15,000 to 30,000 <laughs> visitors a month. So truth. It um, is. All I, that's not bragging. That's like, I've spent a lot of time thinking about yeah. these things and looking like researching these. So, um, how I've described it in previous webinars is think of your page title literally as your slogan that you want people to find you by. So specifically, if Stephanie's agency is called Stephanie's luxury cruises.com, what I would not title the website to be is Stephanie's luxury cruises. Believe it or not, search engines are smart enough to read your URL already. So think, uh, change how you think about this of the page title of the order of the words is also valuable. The first words that display there are, are more heavily weighted by search engines in there. So think about it this way. What are the key words that you think uh, people, humans, will be searching for to try to find a business that you have services to, to give them, to offer them. So it might be, uh, for example, uh, River Cruise Agency, Chicago, Illinois, something of that nature, or multi-gen river cruises, or Budapest river cruises, something that uh, those keywords have a huge effect on how they search and find you. So you want to start shifting how you think about that. So you can see uh, within uh, Stephanie's page title there, Luxury Mediterranean and River Cruises Serving Nebraska and Iowa. So that's a So uh, one caveat, that's starting to get on the long side of page titles. I, I'm spacing the, uh, I think you have it in the You have agenda. 50 to 60 characters. 50 to 60 mm -hmm. characters. Thank you. So that's the length that you want to shoot for for a page title, about 50 to 60 characters. Think of it like the slogan of how you want people to find you. What are the terms or the words that they're going to search for to find you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that that's so important, um, you know, and, and the other thing too to um, make note of is this will start making a lot more sense too when we go into the settings where we are, but right in the spot, there's this tab that's SEO and social that's literally built for that. Um, so we'll fill this out, but notice how the luxury Mediterranean river cruises serving Nebraska and Iowa appears there. So I love this because you can actually see what this looks like. So, you know, when you go on Google and you search for something, that's what you're seeing. Um, so it's really important that you can check it out and be like, okay, that's that length, you know, it's going to work. Like I can't go any further. Um, I have good keywords in there. 
Now, the second spot, though, that's really important um, is we talked about the page descript or the page title, but now we want to talk about the description because you know when you Google for something, you see the description, but you don't, or you see the title, but you also see like a couple, you know, key sentences or something. So you're like, that's what I need. I know that's what I need. Um, so that's what this is, is the SEO site or uh, site description. And um, this should be 50 to 160 characters. It's got to yeah. let you explain sure. more. Short. So if the page mm -hmm. title was our slogan, this is now your very quick elevator pitch of what you do, why you're unique, why you're valuable, because ultimately the search engines are going to find you by that page title. They'll also look at this, but ultimately humans are going to briefly read this or touch on a few things. And that this is really important within those first 60 to 130 characters, they need to know why they should be paying attention to you and visiting your website. Um, so that that's where it's important, not just to use enticing language, but helpful language for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can see an example here that I just put, um, you know, discover bucket list travel experiences. Um, and you're just, and again, the elevator pitch, I think that's the, the best way to put it is like, what do you say when someone's like, what do you specialize in or what do you do? You know, that's what you type in there. Um, so really cool. And then again, you can see, you know, that, that social pre that preview, which is really helpful. Um, there's also the social media image. That's really important. So that's basically if you've ever copy and pasted a link onto like a Facebook post and you know how an image appears, that's what this is. Um, so this is really nice. Like, um, I'm just going to put like uh, Italy. I'll just do a Italy picture here um, just so you can see. Um, I'll just put a basic photo, but see now like that's what that social preview is. So if someone copy and pasted my website onto Facebook, it'll actually be pretty looking. It'll have like a photo and it won't just be text. Um, so that's what it, that's what that is. Um, so really important, you know, to go in as you're setting up your pages to go in and do that page title and, um, fill out the SEO and social. Um, but a little more on SEO, there's a couple other, there's, well, actually this whole website is kind of like SEO, um, but two places that you should pay attention to is the hero. So this, we call this the hero. That's also what this element is called. Um, it's like the first thing they see, like, okay, what is this page that I just found? I'm just on now. Um, so one thing um, is really important to focus on this as well and be thoughtful about that. Um, so Scott, like what tips would you have on like the hero section or just being mindful of this area? Yeah, hero section is really, really important for SEO. Uh, search engines will actually visually, the, the, the robots, so to speak, of the search engine, the computer, the software will look and see what is visible above the fold. And what I mean by that is when the window first loads in your browser, it's actually looking to see what text and content is loaded initially because it assumes that content is the most important content on the page. So to that point, what Stephanie has on screen there is a good uh, in like uh, visualization of what's above the fold and initially loads. So your hero is prime real estate for that. So what you have in that hero is an H1 tag, that's a headline tag, and that is critically important for search engines. So thinking about it this way, your page title needs to make sense with your site description, which needs to make sense with your hero. If those are disconnected psychologically, it will not make, make sense for people, for humans that are visiting your website, as well as it will not give clear signals and signs to search engines that your content makes sense together. So the, that primary hero tag needs to, again, uh, be very descriptive of the words or the terms that you want people to find you. And it should not only make sense for search engines, for robots, but make sense for, for humans to read it. So the reason I'm mentioning that is because sometimes people get very caught up and focused on how do I focus on search terms? And then they write a whole bunch of stuff and it sounds like a robot talking when you, yeah. when you read it because they're just trying to like place search terms in there. Search engines have gotten extremely advanced and they can read that and detect that when you're just trying to detect, um, uh, trying to stuff keywords into a website that way. Uh, so they'll pick up on that as well. Humans won't stay on your website. They'll just leave. And that's called a bounce, a bounce rate. So 
search engines will also look at that. If you don't have good content that makes sense that humans want to visit and stay on, if they go to your website and they're like, nope, this isn't what I'm looking for. This looks terrible. I'm going to leave. That's called a bounce rate. And the faster that bounce rate is and the higher the amount of those bounces, the, the further down in search results you're going to be. So you can have good content that makes sense that's written well for humans to find you that way. So think of it first that way and, and you'll be rewarded in search rankings. See, this is why I brought Scott into this. Smart. Chief I actually like didn't even know SEO that. SEO educator. Educator, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, SEO, it's such a weird thing because in, in, and it also like the name of it just sounds like it's unobtainable, but it's actually really easy. You know, you just, one thing too. Um, so I think you did this on the last webinar you had mentioned, I thought this was a good idea that you said, especially when it comes to like content, because it also matters all the content you have in here, like all of this text, it all matters. And, um, one idea that, um, Scott had given before was write down a list of like 10 keywords that you want to rank for. So think of your special specialties, the type of clients, the demographic, destinations, geographic region, think, add those, and then think about how you can like relevantly. So not just like, not like a robot talking, um, basically put those in there and, and make sure that you're using those keywords. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, many of you are familiar in business and marketing. You can't be everything to everyone. You definitely cannot be everything to everyone in search engine optimization either. So what Stephanie's mentioning is spot on. Really start and focus on, I wanna own this area, that this is where I wanna focus and build search engine rankings for with these 10 keywords, et cetera. From there, then that builds you some credibility with search engines that then you can expand out your real estate, so to speak, and start building out content and other terms around other types of content to start to bring your rankings up in other ways that way. And that then the traffic from your main website can start to shift over to those additional pages you're creating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, um, and we also do have, uh, there's an FAQ. We have an FAQ on like SEO stuff too. Um, so feel free to like check that out, um, as well as you're building your, um, websites and landing pages. Um, but just one thing that I want to note too, before I dive in, cause I'm going to talk about landing pages. Um, but I just want to keep just a pro tip here. If this is like, if you're setting up a website in Travify for your first time, you know, we've gone over a lot of different things you can do, but also at the end of the day, keeping it simple is the most important thing you can do. So what we mean by that is if you're going to go in here after this and dive in, like maybe just make three pages max, do a page, you know, your home, do something about, maybe you don't even have other pages, just one page, um, you know, about maybe the destinations you cover and services you provide. And that's it. Oh, and also really important, add a contact form. Like that is a, that's a given. You should definitely have like a form or a contact button in there, but that's it though. You know, you don't have to overcomplicate it too. So just want to mention that, um, you know, as you start to explore this. Um, now, the other thing I want to talk about is I do want to talk about landing pages a little bit here. Um, and I won't go too in depth about it, but um, I do just want to explain. So we showed, you know, how you would create a landing page or a website. So everything we've gone over is all the same for both. Um, but when it comes to landing pages, um, this is really great because again, as I was mentioning, a landing page is really great if you have something just to promote or send people to one thing. Um, so think of this like packages, a promotion, destination wedding pages, group cruise, um, no matter what it is, um, you can create a landing page really simple for it. You can like import a trip, um, you know, add a form to create those registrations or lead inquiries. And then all you do is you have a link that you share and then you can put out like on Facebook, put in your email list um, or email newsletter. Um, I mean, there's so much. So to give you some examples, I want to show, I'm going to start bringing in some examples here. So Here's one. Um, so I'm actually going to copy. I'm gonna I'm gonna paste this in to your chat here. Um, but I built this um, as like a group, like a cr river cruise, uh, pretending like I was booking. And you can see it's simple. You know, I have um, some you know something to draw them in. I have a little bit of an information about it. Um, I threw in a client review, and then here I have the um, you know the itinerary they can view. And then at the bottom, there's a reserve now where I can start collecting information in a form. Very simple. That's all it is. Um, now, another example, I have I have a couple other examples. So if any of you have um, chatted with, um, oh, wait, let's see, I want, 
this one. So if anyone knows Bonnie from our team, she made these and I grabbed them from her. So I'm like, I need to share these because they're so good. Um, so she made some examples for like a wedding. So if you do specialize in um, weddings, this is a great thing to look at um, where this is kind of just, you know, like a, a page where all the people who are attending this wedding, like this destination wedding can go to. They have all their forms in here. They might have their trip itinerary they can look at. Um, they can email you. Um, just a great example of what you can do. Um, same thing here. This is kind of like a landing page to promote like one of, um, like if you do specialize in destination weddings, you can show examples, like a, an example trip in here, um, you know, reviews, all that good stuff. Um, but I just think it's so cool because it's so simple and it looks amazing. Um, so really awesome stuff that you can um, do here. I'll throw that in there too. Um, cause real life examples are always very helpful. Um, but you know, lots of things um, in there. The other thing that I want to talk about, um, and then I'm going to get into domain masking, um, I'll chat about, but I also do want to share real life ones. I want to share more. So these are websites um, that actual users have created. Um, I love sharing these because it gives you, they all look so different. So here's one, you can see they have a lot of stuff in here, like a lot of like anything you need is on their website that they, that you can come and access. Um, we also have a uh, same thing here, you know, there's some pictures, um, this one, I like this one. Cause it's, um, it's a really simple one where it just has like trips and then just like about, and then it's like, Hey, you like these contact me, um, type of a thing. And then there's also this one. I'll share this one um, in here that you can check out too. Um, this one's really cool because again, it's being used as a full website. Um, so it's just showing them like you can see everything they specialize in, um, all kinds of things. So I know that's really helpful always to see like what are other people doing? Um, so you can see those in there. And also if you go to our Facebook group, we have um, an official Travify user Facebook group um, and we've asked people to share them in there. So you can also find more examples in there and just get some ideas too. Um, now, Two final things I want to talk about um, is uh, domain masking is one. So when it comes to domain masking, so domain masking obviously is, you know, how can I make it like these, these ones right here, like bliss trips, um, you know, dot com. How do I get that? So um, basically, if you own a domain, so you can go out and buy a domain from like GoDaddy is an example just that comes to mind right away, but there's lots of them. Um, but you can buy a domain. A lot of times they're like $10, uh, but sometimes it just depends what domain you're looking for. Um, but you can purchase a domain. And then once you purchase that domain, you can set it up in your Travify account and it's completely free. Um, now, how you do that um, is you'll actually end up going into your account settings here. Um, so if you go into your account you can click into um, settings. Now I do have a domain already set up. So you can, you can, uh, but otherwise you'd go through the process here. Um, now, one thing I'll note is there's two different types of domain, like masking that you can do. Um, one is you can say um, you're using Travify as your full domain. So if you're using it, like this is your main website, um, then you'll say, I want to use Travify domain as my website. But let's say you already have a website, you have a domain, you have a website, so you're going to use this for like landing pages. So then that way you can actually do, it's called a subdomain where we're not taking the full domain um, name, we're putting trips in front of it. So that way your clients can still go to your domain and access your website. But then if they go to trips dot your domain name, like slash whatever it might be, um, that's how that it changes. So it's basically the difference between the two. Now, um, I also totally understand that this is a little foreign, you know, tr you, you still travel, you don't spend time in uh, like a DNS panel of a domain. So um, we are here to help you with this as well. So we do have, um, a, we have an FAQ, I'll, I'll throw it in the chat here. Um, so in this FAQ, um, you can go ahead uh, and try it yourself. You can uh, just read read through um, because it is actually fairly simple. But again, if you've never done it before, you're, you, you'll be like, what? So um, we're happy to help navigate you. Um, so you can schedule um, a training with us. So uh, let me throw this in the chat. So we actually do. We'll get on a screen share with you. Um, and it's pretty quick, too. Um, we can get on a screen share and um, help you walk through that.
Um, another thing you can do if you want to get up and going really fast, but still need help is um, if you get in your, what it's called the DNS panel of your domain, um, take a screenshot and just send it to us. And we might be able to help you navigate what you need to do. Cause it's, it's really not much. It's just a couple of things you need to plug in, but um, so feel free, uh, just chat with our support team too. Um, the last thing that I'll talk about here in your settings, um, so that's domain, um, but we also have analytic tracking. So if you do have, if you do deal with analytic tracking, um, you can actually, it's supported with Meta and um, Google Analytics in here. Um, so if you do have those um, in your settings, you can just go to linked accounts and then click on analytics and you can just quickly set that up in there as well. And this is pretty new. Um, this was came out not too long ago. So really exciting addition that you can have that. Um, and then, okay, now I have to wrap up. I knew this was going to go. I told you there's a lot in here. Um, so I want to get to a couple questions at least. So um, so to wrap up, uh, to start a free trial. Um, so if you like what you see, um, you can go to Travify.com um, and you can uh, access everything. So you can do the website, everything in there. Um, but during that trial, I recommend, you know, schedule a training or a demo with us. Um, you know, we are always here and happy to help. Um, if you go to travify.com slash support, um, first of all, we have lots of videos just about this that you can look at. We have weekly webinars, but we also have trainings. Um, so you can always schedule a demo or a training with us. And again, they're completely free. We have that chat support in there as well. Um, so basically to all to say, we are here to help you. Um, you're not alone, you know, trying to build this on your own. So, okay. That was quite a bit. What question, what, what are some top questions that I can help answer here? Let's see. I, I've been working in a fury <laughs> answering questions in here. Lots of really good questions. Um, one would be, uh, can you have, uh, for domain masking, can you only uh, do one domain or can you actually have multiple domains on your account? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, you can only set up one domain in here. Um, so there's only the ability. So when you go into your settings, you can see here that there's only the option um, to set one. So you can have like multiple. Um, so you'll only be able to do one, but you can also um, pay attention. You can always change the slug, which is if it's like travify.com slash support or something, you can just um, name your slug. So that way um, you can say like, viptravel.com slash services or something to try to guide them somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, next question. Can you explain what the meta tracking and Google Analytics tracking support is? Yeah. So, um, and you might have to jump in on this too. So mm -hmm. basically like, well, tracking pixels is really, if you want to see like, where are people coming from that go to your site, basically, um, that is what this would be. So, um, if you want to know like how many people are searching, you know, a certain keyword and they're landing on your site, you could know that. And, and am I explaining that correctly? I mean, yeah. So essentially what these are, for example, uh, Google Analytics, uh, if you need a really great, robust way to track traffic to your website and to be able to see where that traffic's coming from, did they use search terms or, or a search engine like Google, and what keywords did they use to find your website? Once they got to your website, what did they do? How long were they there? Google Analytics will answer all of that. Now, to clarify, we are not Google, <laughs> so no. <laughs> um, so we can offer you a few tips, but ultimately there are a gajillion resources out there. Just literally search, how do I set up Google Analytics in your browser, and Google will walk you through it exactly. But ultimately, you will once you set up your Google Analytics account, you will get a Google Analytics ID. You can drop that in there, and then Travify will take care of the rest to allow Google Analytics to start pulling information from your website traffic in there. Similarly with meta uh, pixels, uh, the value of this, if you run Facebook ads, Instagram ads, or things like that for your trips, now then you can actually track that traffic from your ad all the way to your website in there. So it's a great way to be able to um, stay on top and be able to calculate ROI on what you're investing, whether it be your own time or actual uh, advertising dollars and things like that. This is a great way to be able to do that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, another question in here, um, multiple pages. How do I create multiple pages on my website? Yes. Oh, this is a really big one. This, this one always gets in, um, you know, 
how, how this works, because we, there's so many ways you can use this again, landing pages or one website, but basically all you're doing is right here at the top, you have all your pages. So you can see all the pages that you're working on that little home button. That means that's your main website. So, um, you can, main you can always page. switch it. main homepage. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Um, so home homepage works out right. Um, and, uh, so you can always change that. Um, but just know that that's, that's what that is. And like, if that cloud is checked, that means it's published. Um, but basically all you do is you're just creating new pages. So if you just want to create a new page, you can start building it out. And then if you want to link it somewhere, you can do that by, um, you know, let's say come into this nav bar here and where it says about, maybe I'll change it, um, to like, um, that are booking now or something. Um, and then what I can do is the link type can go to a page. So if you click page, that means it's going to show you all the pages that you have created so far, and then you can link it that way. So now when I'm viewing this and I click booking now, it takes me to that new page. So that's basically how that's working. Um, so again, and that's where that's, and so notice how I can link that to another uh, uh, web page that I have, but I can also just use that link as like a standalone just to sh send to somebody or something. Um, so that's basically um, how you would be able to do that. One pro tip too, is you can also copy pages. Um, so if you want to copy, you can um, do that. So you can click this little copy, this little like paper. Um, and that way you can copy things too, to try to keep like everything, like the toolbar, the same and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, another question. I'll take this one. Cool. Uh, a few agents ask, Hey, I have different affiliate websites set up that I want to allow clients to self book through things, but then I can capture the commission through it. Can I put a banner or something on, on Travify's website builder? And so you can, the, the way that I would recommend doing that is uh, you'll click that new element button. So Stephanie, if you can select that, there are a few different elements that work really nicely for this option. I would personally recommend either the hero or the call to action. You can repurpose those and use those however you want. And so for example, like the, uh, you don't, you can place it anywhere on your website. So don't feel like you have to place it in a certain spot, but what you'll do then is pick out a nice, beautiful background image for it. Uh, but then you can update the text that's displayed there, uh, like a call to action, add a brief follow-up. You can see the text on there. You can customize that. So maybe you're linking to your Viator uh, affiliate website or your Sandals affiliate website or something like that then you can update the text accordingly so that it's enticing, tells you know the user why they should look at the information or visit your affiliate website, but then you can add a button to it. And so if you click add a button, then you can add a custom button on there that then links and you'll use your affiliate website link to place in there and that will send that traffic to your affiliate website that way. Now, the value of doing that, some agents ask, well, they, you know, Sandals sent me this banner ad, true, but that's not your branding, that's Sandals branding. So also think about being brand centric and it will help you look more professional uh, versus just slapping other companies' ads on your website. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I'm approaching it from a, if I wanna create a singular brand voice and brand look on my website, what is the best possible way to do that? That's what I'm mentioning here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then another question, what was it? Um, Oh, I'm losing it. Sorry, a lot of questions oh, that's came okay. while I was talking. <laughs> it sparked a lot of a lot of yeah. questions. Uh some oh, landing pages. Why why would an agent use landing pages? Oh, why? Uh well, there's so many reasons why, but marketing. It's really just marketing. Um like, okay, let's say for example, you want, I mean, there's so many things you could be doing, but like, if you just want to promote one thing or let's say, you know, in 2023, you really want to, um, up your game of like doing uh river cruises or something. So maybe you'll build a landing page that just supports that thing. Um, you know, one thing. And then of course you have, um, like, let me go back to this one, for example, um, where it's just basic, maybe four or five elements tops, not even maybe. Um, and maybe you'll put a example I but then you have like that call to action in there as well. Um, another thing I've seen too is where people will have it uh, to go like sign up for um, like if they're interested in a group trip or something, um, you know, they can do it there. But there's a lot of use cases. There's so many different. Um, I've seen a lot of people get pretty um, 
pretty cool. Like do some cool things with it. But um, really, again, it's just a URL that you're sending to someone and it looks very visually nice and has all the information they need. Hopefully that helps. Very helpful. Cool. So <laughs> we're, I know we're running out of time. There, there were some questions that came in that unfortunately we're just not going to be able to get to. We are, we did record this. Uh, mm -hmm. Stephanie will probably post it to YouTube uh, before the end of the day. So then you have very fun, exciting entertainment uh, for the weekend yes. uh, to work on your website. Um, I admire all of you uh, travel hustlers that uh, are working on your website over the weekend. Um, if we didn't get to your questions, firstly, want to say thank you for coming and apologize that we didn't get to it. I am going to post the training to our training calendar. Sorry, the link to our training calendar um, in the chat there. So if we didn't get to your question, go ahead and click on the uh, training calendar. You can schedule a one on one training session with our support team. They'll go through any of uh, the website features and functionality personally with you. Um, so never feel like you can't reach out to us. You can also jump on the live chat inside your account and get help that way. Um, but Stephanie, great yeah. job as always. Thank Thanks you for a lot. making this a fun way to, to cap off the week and giving uh, giving our customers something fun to work on for the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And and as Scott mentioned, like, let us know how we can help, um, you know. Um, and also, yeah, I'll get that on YouTube. But there's actually, you'll be able to, if you go to the registration for Zoom, in about 15, 20 minutes, you'll be able to watch it right away. Um, so if you don't want to wait for me to get that up too, so you, you could see that um, as well. But otherwise... Thank you, everybody. That was so much, but so much fun stuff. Um, yeah. And have a great weekend, too. We're have a great weekend. Have a good Friday. See ya. See ya.